all of the you know different documentation gives you a pin weight. Yeah. What is that pin weight really based on? And should you be using that pin weight? I never use it. Welcome to Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday, brought to you by Big Beard Battery. Visit BigBeardBattery.com. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hey, Todd here, and I'm with Joe over at Two Crazy Campers and uh, Two Crazy Ketos, correct? Two, that's All right. right. So we're doing a couple things. First off, you may notice that the set is changing. We're actually building a new set. And what we're gonna be doing is uh, putting up uh, a couple uh, solar systems so that way I can help you with some more tech tips. So, um, Joe, we're currently doing a system uh, build right now, but you had a list of uh, uh, maybe questions that people ask you. You're in the, you're in the industry and, and people ask you a lot of questions. We do a lot of tech tips and we keep it down to two minutes. And so we probably won't even get to the question in two minutes, but what questions might you have that maybe your, uh, uh, your viewers may ask you from time to time? Well, here's a good one. Right now, we're coming into RV season. People are buying RVs. They're yep. shopping. They're going around looking at things. They have a truck. Yep. And they need to know, can my truck safely tow this? And right. the biggest number that people should be looking at is what Ford. is the tongue weight? Yeah. You know, what is the tongue weight on the trailer or what is the pin weight and how much of it's transferring over? What yep. number should they be looking at? All right. So a couple things, right? And really the best way uh, to do this is, is whenever you look at tongue weight, that's whatever's in the RV right now and, or, you know, whatever, uh, whenever the RV is put together and it does not include the cargo carrying capacity. When you add, you know, the dry weight, plus the cargo carrying capacity, you get the gross vehicle weight rating, right? Now, when you look at your truck, you're gonna have tow, you know, the tow capabilities, which really means nothing for us. Because this trailer, a lot of that weight is sitting on the truck itself. So we're gonna look at the rear axle weight rating, okay? And quite honestly, what you have to do is put all the stuff in it that you're gonna travel with. Fill it up with fuel, everything as though, hey, this is the max we can do. And then you're gonna to go to a scale system and you have to do two ways. The first way, you're gonna pull the truck and the trailer over the scales. You got scales for the, the front axle, the drive axle, and then the trailer axles. You'll get three different readings, you know, um, again, steer, drive, and uh, trailer. And then you're gonna do a second way where you release the trailer and then you just simply do the truck. Now, you can read all the ratings all you want, but you need to be in the vehicle and whoever's traveling with you, you need to have fuel, whatever that is. If there's cargo in the back, we wanna record all of that. The second, uh, ra uh, the second way is just the steer axle and the drive axles, and you're gonna get that uh, number. You get those numbers, you're gonna look at that rear axle weight rating. You're gonna read the second number on the rear axle your drive axle, you're going to see how far down you are, you know, so if you have a truck and it says you can have 9,000 pounds on the rear axle, when you go on there with you in it, your significant other, all your gear, whatever in the truck, and you get that rating, let's say it's um, 6,000 pounds, and that gives you a 3,000 pound window for that trailer to come over. You don't need to weigh that again because you've already weighed it the first time around, so whenever you take that first way rating, the trailer's already over there, okay? Now, the reason why I'm going through all this detail is we can assume that the trailer, depending if you have a fifth wheel, somewhere between 20 and 25% is gonna be transferred over. But we really don't know that because we don't know where you store stuff. Some people store stuff way up front, which is gonna be more than 25%. Some people may store stuff in the back and it might be slightly less. Best way to do it is the two, do the two ways, uh, uh, two scale ways, and see if you're going to be over the rear axle weight rating, and then all of it together, the gross vehicle combined rate rating. That's really how you do it. All right, that's how I would suggest. I mean, you may have some other suggestions because that's kind of detailed. Well, the one thing that I was looking at is that when you're going and shopping for an RV, all of the you know different documentation gives you a pin weight. Yeah. What is that pin weight really based on? And should you be using that pin weight? I never use it, yeah. Because again, it all depends when it, when it comes out, nothing's on it. That's just a pin weight, what we call dry. And we don't even use that term anymore. There's nothing in it. You get it from the OEM or, or from the dealership. That's it. Nothing else is in it, all right? Now, hardly any of us travel with not putting any cargo in there. So, but that would be roughly the pin weight, what they would expect coming over. So they test it level with nothing in it, this is your pin, pin weight transfer. 
So would you recommend that somebody actually go and if you don't have the trailer yet, you're gonna buy it. Should you just take the max of that trailer and use the 20 to 25% of that instead good, of the dry weight? It, yes, yeah, absolutely. The gross vehicle weight rating and either do 25% or even 27%, kind of fudge that number even higher, right? To see if that would fit, right? That should be, you know, from there, your gross vehicle weight rating of the trailer. Right now you have, let's say you, you, you maxed it. You may have to move some stuff forward and, you know, never hardly ever forward, but you may need to move some of your cargo backwards behind the axles and that will help with your truck. So yeah, 25%, you do need to look at your truck, rear axle weight rating, what can be transferred over. Very okay. good. So there we go. Now for a towable 10 to 15%, fifth wheel 25, you know, 20 to 25%. But, a, you know, um, on, a, on a bumper pull, 10 to 15 percent. There's your tech tip. Hey, if you got questions about batteries or want to go ahead and put in a solar system, but need some guidance, head over to BigBeardBattery.com, fill out the solar design form, and one of our certified solar experts will give you a call and get you started. <laughs> That's right. One, two, one, two. And so it's going to be for, uh, we're just about Ford. Yeah and laugh at everybody because you can pull him.